hear a knock on the door and the night begins Cause we've done this before so you come on in Make yourself at my home, tell me where you been Pour yourself something cold, baby, cheers to this Sometimes you gotta stay in And you know where I live Yeah, you know what we is Sometimes you gotta stay in, in. Welcome to my house Baby, take control now We can't even slow down We don't have to go around Welcome to my house Play that music too loud Show me what you do now We don't have to go Welcome to my house Welcome to my house Morning comes and you know that you wanna stay Close the blinds, let's pretend that the time has changed Keep our clothes on the floor, open up champagne Let's continue tonight, come on celebrate That's how we do Sometimes you gotta stay in And you know where I live Yeah, you know what we is Sometimes you gotta stay in Welcome to my house Baby, take control now We can't even slow down We don't have to go out Welcome to my house Play that music too
four points in that game. Five three-pointers. Paul, according to your stats, he's got 49 on the season. Yeah, he is deadly from behind the arc, and he's only a sophomore standing 5'11". The kid can flat out play here, and he is a big key tonight, Coach. So he led the Patriots back in that first meeting. Matt Walter and Anthony Sinsetti both scored eight points apiece for the Patriots. Chris Catrone led the Cougars with 13. So, you know, taking that into tonight, you know, it's it's going to be a big deal for Hazelton to, to get the ball in the basket when, when, when they are presented with good shots to do so. And also, they're really going to have to keep an eye on Giardina with his three-point shots tonight. Yeah, absolutely. You've got to stop that outside shot. It'll be interesting to see if Hazelton comes out and plays a little man or if they're going to go zone. But Pinson doesn't have a lot of size underneath. The biggest player on their team is six foot two, and that is Jacob Burnett. And he doesn't play a whole lot for Pinson area. But they're not a lot of size there, but they're very quick, and they like to run up and down the court. Hazelton has got to get off to a good start. We've seen this before. Down in, in Reading in the Geigel Classic, it was a disaster in that first quarter. They got down 19-4. to four. They came back, they played well and respectively, but they're already digging out of a 15-point hole. Well, in most of Hazelton's losses this year, in four of the six of them, that's occurred in either one period or at least two of the four periods. They've had a severe drought-like situation. And point blank, just stating the obvious facts, you can't do that against a good basketball no, team. No, absolutely. Because it's going to cost you. And, Coach, you talk about a good basketball team. Pittston area, last year's division, uh, District 2, 5A district champions, won a 20-5 and record. They were 8-4 and four in the conference. They went on to states, and they lost to, and my buddy Shuey will like this, they lost to the Greyhounds of Shippensburg by a score of 49 to 43. And coach, you ever want to see a guy that likes Greyhounds, my buddy Scott's the man for you. Well, and hopefully he's a Chippensburg fan, but hey, listen, this Pittston basketball program isn't coached by just any other run-of-the-mill coach. Al Semenza has been around the block, won his 500th game last season, previously coached at Old Forge, stopped in a couple spots in the Scranton area as well. So, you know, he knows what he's doing. And obviously, Tim Barlett has done a nice job with this program at Hazleton. So what's really interesting is the Cougars come in tonight averaging 53.5 points per game. The Patriots are averaging 53. Yeah, very similar teams. The defense is where there's a little bit of a different picture of wings saying they're so good here. We're, we're on the air here trying to broadcast the game, and they're sending me food pictures. I got a better idea, Coach. How about they send food up to the booth for us? Uh, I'm working, man. We're working. Tell them to knock it off. Hey, we got Christian Smith tonight on stats here, too. Let's uh, give Christian a shout-out here. So if anything gets messed up, you can blame Christian. Let's turn it down now to the public address announcer for tonight's starting lineups. The Hazleton with the National Area National School Athletes. District is committed to the sportsmanship goals of the Pennsylvania Interscholastic Athletic Association. Participants, cheerleaders, officials, and spectators can and are expected to assist in the promotion and achievement of good sportsmanship by taking personal responsibility for keeping this contest at a high level of fair, clean, and wholesome competition. We ask that you remember that the purpose of this activity is to provide positive learning experiences and opportunities for personal growth for the participants. At this time, ladies and gentlemen, please direct your attention to the video board for a message from Dr. Brian Uplinger, Superintendent of Schools in the Hazelton Area School District. Hi everyone, this is Dr. Brian Uplinger, Superintendent of Schools for the Hazelton Area School District. I want to take this opportunity to thank you for being here. Thank you for supporting our students all across the district, from academics to athletics to extracurricular and everything in between. Thank you so much for being here. At this time, please rise for the playing of our national anthem and also our school alma mater. Let's go Cougars.
what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. O'er the ramparts we walked, were so gallantly streaming. And now, let's meet the starting five for the Pittston Area Patriots. He's a 5'11 sophomore guard, wears number two, Silvio Giardina. He's a forward, stands 6'1, he's a senior, number three, Jack Long. At guard, a six-foot sophomore, number 14, Matt Walter. At forward, a 6'1 senior, number 20, Ethan Clark. And at guard, he's a 5'11 senior, number 33, this is Anthony Sensetti. And that'll the Patriots are coached five. by Al Semenza. Coach Semenza, as we said, and now for your hometown Hazelden compares. McFly and Billig and Nate DeBelco. The officials for tonight's game, John Layton, Bruce Weinstock, and Joe Zelinski. Very familiar with the officials here, Coach, tonight. And a tip-off controlled by the Patriots. That is Walter now back over to Cincetti. Cincetti, right-handed dribble, switches over to left, pass back down to Walter. And Anthony drives baseline, pass a little too hot to handle, kicks it back out to Giardina. And now down to Cincetti, drives down the lane, gets his own rebound. And you can see that, that football body on Cincetti. He's strong coach on his, on his base there. That he is. He had a couple of opportunities there to put the ball in the basket. It's going to be on Guzman, the foul. First one up and first one's good by Cincetti. We saw Anthony on the, on the gridiron there, wide receiver for the Patriots. Good-looking athlete. 5'11". Senior, second one on its way, made it look easy, and the Patriots out to a 2-0 lead. And Gennaro now jogs the ball up the court as they cross the timeline. 
Pass over to Marshall. Marshall on the right wing now kicks it back out. Santiago puts it back to Marshall. Thought about a three, but he took the steps as referee Bruce Weinstock calls a walk. Call it quickly. And it is, so... We play on. 7.24 to go in the opening quarter. Interesting first possession for the Patriots. Didn't look for a three-point shot, nope. by the way. We're looking to get the ball inside, which they did. Giardina, nice pass down low. That is Walter missed and rebound by Marshall into the hands of Santiago. Cougars looking to run here, but pits them back in transition. Santiago now at the point over to Guzman. Guzman kicks it back over to Catron. Seven minutes to go, just underway here from Hazelton area. 2-0, Pittston leads. Sammy kicks it back. Gennaro, he'll launch a three. He's got it. Yeah, pure nothing but net for Chris. A beautiful release. Yeah, Luke got a good look at that and knocked it right down. I said Chris, it was Luke. I'm sorry. That's all right. Over to Giardina, now swings it back over to Clark. Clark, now nice pass down low. Walter at the doorstep, no good, and he had it blocked by, Santi er, uh, by Guzman. Santiago in transition, taps the brakes, and it should stay here with the Cougars, and it will. With 6.28 to go in the first quarter, Coach. Yeah, interesting so far. Three Patriot possessions and three times they're trying to get the ball inside. Guzman looks to trigger the inbound over to Santiago. Left wing extended. Swings it back over to Catron. Excuse me, to Gennaro. Jump stop back over to Sammy at the doorstep. Off the window, up and in. Good ball movement by Hazelden. Found the cutter, and Guzman laid it up and in. Did an excellent control of his body there to get that pass, which was just a little bit behind him when he was able to contort the right way and get that ball in the basket for Cincinnati. the Cougars. Over to Long. Back over to Long again, kicks it back over to Giardina. Long shot from there, no good, rebounded by Walter. And a kick another, Trey Long distance, dialed in by Giardina. Here he goes. That's number 50 for the year, Coach. Pittston area controlling the offensive glass so far in this game. Are Not you surprised a good sign. by that? I am surprised by that. I am too. Santiago now down low to Guzman. Cutter going through the lane. Back out to Gennaro over to Catron. He's going to launch a three. That's no good. Hard off the iron. And a rebound by Giardina. And they're going to call an offensive foul on him. No, Giardina. they're called a walk. Oh, walk. I'm sorry. Could not see under the basket. That's why you got those Hawkeyes. Back over to Gennaro. Over to Santiago. Right wing. Bounce pass down low to Marshall. Has it poked away. And here comes Giardina. One-handed pass over to Cincetti. Nice turn up and in. A nice use of the pivot foot there by Cincetti as he gets his fourth point of the evening. And we got Santiago. Right wing. Pass inside to Guzman at the elbow. Here's a three-pointer long distance off the back of the iron air. Marshall keeps it alive. Hazel area looking to regroup. 4.40 to go in the opening quarter. 7-5 pits to the area. Guzman taps the brakes. Back to Santiago. A little head fake. Drives, kicks it back over. Gennaro for three. Spots up around the rim. Can't get it to fall. And Jack Long pulls down the boards. And I'll tell you what, Cincetti's look good here in the first quarter. we got a palming of turning the ball over. Turnover by the Patriots, unforced. 7-5. 421 left to go in the first quarter tonight from a nice crowd at McKeon Gymnasium. Here comes Gennaro. Gennaro over to Santiago. Takes up his dribble. Bounce pass. Into control. Now kicks it back out. Santiago launches a three. Gets his legs into it. Can't get it to fall. And three Patriots pulled on the boards there. And it's one and done for the Cougars yep. early on. Into the hands of Sincetti. And back out to Giardina. Here's a steal by Guzman. And Sammy lays it up and in. Great anticipation by Sammy to step in front of that pass. Silvio was not looking where he passed the ball there. And Sammy jumped the pass. We're tied at seven here. 3.37 to go in the opening quarter. Big game here, big game crowd. Tries to dish it down low, and they're going to lose it as it's off the hands of Matt Walter. They tried to do a give and go there, but 
a little bit of too much mustard on that pass and it's out of bounds and another turnover for the Patriots. I thought Giardino was going to shoot it. He had an open lane there. That's what I thought as well, but he dished it off. Sometimes it's, sometimes it's one too many passes. Oh, control right to the basket, untouched. Yes. I'll tell you what, I'd like to see Hazelton take it more to the basket tonight against Pitts than a huge size advantage down low if the Cougars choose to use it. Cincetti drives long cross-court pass and it'll stay here with Pittston as it's off the hands of Gennaro. And Giardina will trigger the inbound from the corner and over to Cincetti. One thing that I've noticed about Pittston, they play physically. They're, they're physical, their hands are everywhere, they contest everything so far. No. And uh, Giardina again off a of screen. And he's smooth as silk. Doesn't take him long to launch that shot. Not at all. That's two three-pointers for him tonight. Marshall to answer from the other end. Off the back of the teacup there, coach. Correct. Over to Gennaro, left wing. Kicks it back, top of the key. Santiago swings it over to Marshall. 2.16 to go in the opening quarter. 10-9 Patriots lead. Back over to Catrone. Santiago, another three from Hazelton from the corner. Nikolai knocks it down. And it's good to see Nikolai keep confidence in his shot. He missed his first couple three-pointers. Hazelton, two of seven from behind the arc here, almost through his first quarter, coach. They're going to have to do better. Absolutely. Nice pass to Walter down low, off the window, up and in. That nice cutter. I'll tell you what, Matt Walter's only a sophomore, six foot. I like the way he plays. A lot of grit, a lot of bumping around for the big boy. Over to Marshall, we are tied here at 12, 134 to go in a rapid moving first quarter. Another turnover in the hands of Clark. Neither team coach has substituted yet. Nope. Guzman goes for the steal, doesn't get it. Santiago has it slapped but right into the hands of Clark. And we're at 117 to go in Cincinnati. Back to reset. Over to Giardina. Back out between the circles. And Left. Sammy's following him wherever he goes, and they're passing him off. Cincetti taps the brakes back over to Long. And he zigged when he zagged, Coach. Yep. And let's give a quick shout-out there to, uh, to Sammy, who's doing a nice job following him and harassing him that time down the court. 58 seconds to go. That's five turnovers for Pittston here in the first quarter. Good job by our stat man over there on the ball. Over to Marshall. Marshall, chest high pass over to Guzman. 45 seconds to go. Back to Catrone. Catrone thought about it from right outside the foul line. No good. A little hard. And a rebound by Cincetti. Not a good shot for the Cougars there. No, I don't believe it was. I agree with you on that one. And we'll see if uh, Pittston's going to hold for one shot. Only one foul in this first quarter. And Cincetti with the ball. Over to Giardina. Yo-Yo's there between his legs. Kicks it back himself. Drives off the window, no good. Not a good shot for Pittston e either. As we're under 10 seconds to go, Gennaro over the corner. Hazel Harry better hurry as it's five seconds. Ball still that rolling, it's Hazleton gonna be ball. white ball here, coach, with 2.3 seconds to go. They yeah, almost ran out of time without getting a shot off, so we'll see what they've got concocted. See, there's plenty of time to get a good shot off here. Yep, 2.3 seconds to go, Guzman to inbound. Marshall gets a good look, high arcing three, no good, rebounded by Sensetti. At the quarter. And we are mirror image, Coach, 12-12 after one. We'll be back. We'll have some stats, and we'll be back with the second period. Christian, what do you got for me? All right. Um, so one question. Yep. I wasn't sure. What's that? Oh, no. Okay. All right, 
we're back here to Hazel area. One quarter in the books. 12 to 12. Hazel shooting 25% from behind the arc. They are three for five from the field. Just two for eight from three-point land. Pinson area, three from eight from the field. They are two for two from three-point land. Five turnovers. Hazel area only turned the ball over once in that first quarter. But all that means nothing, Coach. On the scoreboard, it still says 12-12. Eerily similar to the game played earlier at Pittston. Nip and tuck. You want to take away that one bad quarter, and Hazel could have very easily won that first game. Let's hope that doesn't happen tonight. A little bit surprised that they're not attacking down low a little bit more. Yeah, I'll tell you what, one player who I am very impressed with is Anthony Cincetti for Pittston. Absolutely. If you look at all of Pittston's players, just look at them. I, I would... I would bet they've spent time weight training. But yeah, since then he's a big kid. He's not as he's five eleven. We're way up here, so we look, everybody looks short up here. But he, I tell you what, he's got some pipes like the Rock on him. Gennaro for three, in and out, and a rebounded by Marshall. No call underneath there. Let's say jump ball, and it's going to be Pittston ball. Well, I think they're letting them play liberally with their hands and. Poke checks, if you will, so away we go. Well, we like to see it settled on the court, so just be consistent. That's all you ever ask from officials? Absolutely. And here comes Cincetti, off the bounce. Right-handed dribble between his legs, cross the timeline, over to the left. Cincetti picks up his dribble, chest high, pass over to Giardina. Just underway here in the second corner. So there's a poke check away right there on cue, Coach. And Gennaro should lay it up and in and does. Nice. Hazelton's you know, it, playing well defensively. And in a game, Coach, where they're not calling those ticky-tack fouls, you can go to reach like that. Absolutely. Reach away. Yep. That's about the third uh, steal Hazelton has. And over to Cin uh, Cincetti. Now back top of the key over to uh, Clark. Clark, he drops it back to Cincetti. Drives uncontested right to the basket up and in. Too easy. And no help underneath. Six points. Yep, give six to Anthony. For the senior, averaging 16 an evening. Bounce pass over to Catrone. Catrone swings it back to Joey Marshall. Santiago back to Gennaro. Gennaro drives, little finger roll up and in. Nice job by Luke. Got a step off the dribble and he made him pay for it. Give seven to the junior. He's been a difference tonight out there. 16-14, Hazel area. Walter, ball, top of the key. Cincetti spots up a three. Sammy overplays him, and it's going to be off his foot. A great recovery by Sammy. He's got his, his feet are fairly quick as well as he cut him off to the basket. Absolutely. Very good defensive player is Guzman. Cincetti spots up for three. He got a good look there. Tries to run it down into the hands of Santiago. Cougars got numbers if they hurry. Three on two break. Back out the control. Long three. No good. And a rebound again. One and done. Over to Giardina. Silvio. Taps the brakes. Can't get it to fall. Marshall pulls the boards. Going at a little quicker pace here this yeah. evening. Yeah, Pittston wants to run. Catrone. Long cross-court pass. Santiago, another three-pointer for Hazelton. No good. Really no, no one even under the basket for the rebound. The Cougars retreated as soon as he released the shot. Hazelton, 2 of 11 from behind the arc here in a period of three minutes. And they're going to have to, they're going to have to shoot better than that I believe if, if they're not going if that's going to be the the meat and potatoes of their game plan then it's safe to say they're going to have to have a better shooting effort than what they've shown so far from three-point land Santiago top of the key right wing long cross-court pass a right idea just launched it a little bit too high both teams a little sloppy here in the second quarter as we're three minutes in coach we always say the first two minutes of every quarter set the tone and this quarter's been up and down the court not a lot of shots not a lot of scoring should I say as it's 4-2 in favor of Hazel in this quarter 
Sonsetti, oh, almost had his puck and picked again is Giardina. Sonsetti drives, there it is, that Gennaro again, quick hands. Yeah, nice reach, poke check, if you will, or a back check. Santiago fills the lane, grabbed on his arm, no call. Once again, no good from the field. And they're going to call a 30-second timeout. Timeout. Probably a good timeout to settle things down. I agree. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back to Hazel. Here, ladies and gentlemen, coach, I'll tell you what, Hazel shooting 55% from the field from inside the arc, but from outside the arc is where the troubles have been. Well, pound the ball inside. Thank you. <laughs> oh, there's a nice, nice block, block as Marshall swats that like a fly at a backyard barbecue in mid July, coach. And they're up by two points, Paul. You know, Absolutely. they're winning the game by two and they're shooting horribly from the perimeter. Coste now into the ball game there as we see our first substitution. And over to Santiago, bounce pass for the foul line. Junior tries to get position and a block there by Long. And they're gonna call a push there on Hazelton. Just the second foul in the game. Correct. And Pinson has not had a foul called against him. Hazelton just two. And 3.58 right. to go. Number three, Junior Coste is first. Joey Marshall has a seat. Two on Marsh. Correct? Yes. Cincinnati across the timeline, crosses over with that right hand, back over to Clark, and over to Walter. Giardino being pressured nonstop, back over to Cincinnati. He's been the one that's been doing the damage. Off balance, Cincinnati off the window. Banks open, coach. Yep. Sensetti. Wonderful basket by Sensetti, but I'm yep. going to bet we'll take him shooting a bunch of those all night. I don't think a ma majority of those are going to go in. Give him eight. Santiago over to Guzman, left wing. Back over, top of the key. 3.11 to go. We are tied at 16 as Gennaro. Nice pass down low. Control steps back for a three. No good. And the woes continue from behind the arc for the Cougars. Cincinnati on a run out. Mid-range jumpers. Got it. I'll tell you what. He's smooth. He's smooth and he can shoot. And he can shoot from the outside. And he can dribble, penetrate, shoot that way. Good ball player. Yeah, he's the total package there. To the corner. Three. Costa long range. No good again from three. And here comes Cincinnati. Nice pass to Walter. Missed the bunny, but Long's there to put it in. And Coach Barlett is going to get a timeout here, and he needs to. With Excuse Pittsburgh. me, that was timeout. Walter that put it in. He's My mistake. Good. Or no, it was Long. I'm was sorry. Long point. Well, I'll tell you what's not. Well, what's glaring to me, and, and if I'm wrong, maybe the stats will tell us something different, but... Hazelton's offensive rebounding is next to nil. They're getting one shot and they're done. Hazelton now two for 13 from three. Pitson, Pitson shooting 50% from the field and three of two of three from behind the arc. 15% from three point land for Hazelton, which is less than it's dropped even 10 more percent. They don't even appear to be looking to get the ball inside no. at all. Well, a lot of cross-court passes kicking out. They're taking the threes immediately. Good news for Hazel is they're only down four. They have the ball, 2.25 to go. You gotta build off our mistakes. And Santiago with the ball, off the bounce, over to Gennaro. Gennaro back over to Nikolai. Nikolai corrals it down over to Guzman. 
Pits it in a 2-3 zone. They're going to extend it a little bit. Marshall looking to distribute. Back over to Guzman. Long three on the way. No good. And a rebounded by Giardina. Here come the Patriots. Sonsetti behind his back. Gennaro in there. Boy, they're just letting them play tonight. Long pass. Oh, Guzman, right place, right time. Yeah, bounced off of Joey Marshall right to Sammy, and he was there to clean it up. Good hustle by him to get down to court. 137 to go, two-point ball game. In the half here, Sinsetti from the foul line. Oh, nice up and under. Can't get it to fall, Long with the rebound. Turn around, jumper for Long, a jump hook. Knocks it down. Jack Long, also a pretty good golfer, coach, for the Pittston area golf team. Santiago almost has it taken away. Kicks it to the corner. Marshall's going to launch a three. That's no good. Guzman picks up that sanitation work again. Santiago for three. Well, you got to keep shooting, coach. Well, they are. That's for sure. They're not shy about it. Guns a blazing, a one point game. We're under a minute to go here in the second quarter. Clark with the ball between the circles. Pass down to Walter. Good block by Control. Chris came across there, swatted that away, and I'm surprised you don't have something to say. Not one yet. One of your pet sayings there, which patented I'll, boisms, as I'm calling them. I only call them when I feel it. Uh, Giardina to inbound. And over to Clark. Picks up his dribble now over to Cincinnati. 37 seconds to go. Pittston running some clock. Gennaro all over Giardina. Back out to Clark. 27 seconds on the clock. Pittston appears to be holding for one shot, coach. They are. Cincinnati behind his back. Oh, high dribble there by Anthony. Weaves around, leans in. Can't get it to fall, and they're going to get over the back here on Pittston. Jack Long is going to be the culprit, I believe. That is the first team foul on Pittston with 14 seconds to go in the half. Very well played half, if you're going to say foul-wise. I'm not saying shooting percentages. I'm saying foul-wise. Only three total. 13 seconds to go. Cougars looking to take the lead into the locker room if they can score here. Eight seconds. Gennaro for long three. Can't get it to fall. Rebound. Control. Still tipped around two. At the horn, Gennaro misses the bunny. And we are at the half. 22-21. Very interesting half. Coach Ladies and Lama gentlemen, if you will check your 50 tickets at this time. I don't time. think he's real happy with a couple things. And Checking 50, 50 hopefully tickets, we'll make please. some adjustments. And Hey, the good part if you're a Hazel area fan, four, you're down by one point. Nine, yeah, I don't think you can shoot eight, any worse from the perimeter. Two, no. And you're down Three, by one point, so. All right, let's take nine, a break. We'll come back. We'll have some we stats. Four, we'll talk about what they have nine, to do in the third quarter. Eight, and uh, we'll be back two, to Hazel area. Three, nine. Last call on the 50-50. Four, nine, eight, two, three, nine. If you have the winning ticket, you can claim your prize right here at the scores table. Halftime shootout. Pretty girls around me and they're waking up the rocket. Keep up. Why you mad? 
Fix your face, ain't my fault they all be jockey Keep up, players only Come on, put your pinky razor to the moon Girls, what y'all trying to do? 24 karat magic in the Yeah. 
Everybody looking for it. Alright, we are back here at Hazleton area. Before we go any farther, Kurt, Coach, we got a birthday to wish. Stacy Mahalik celebrating her 21st birthday today. Bobby's wife. Happy birthday. She's listening to the Cougars. She's listening to the Cougars, not us. We know that. Happy birthday to Stacy. Hope you're having a great day, and hopefully the Cougars will have a better half. But, Coach, you know, I've been getting text messages during the half, and when teams don't play well, if you're a Princeton fan, you're up one. If you're a Hazel fan, you're only down one. But let's talk a little bit about shooting here. For Pinston area, 22 points, 8 for 19 for the field, shooting 42%, 2 of 3 from three-point land, shooting 66%. The negative thing for Pinston is the eight turnovers. Correct. And, and a lot of that has to do with Hazleton's yes, tenacity yes. defensively. They did a great job fronting, extending out, tough man-to-man -man uh, defense. You know, they've really shut down, for the most part, Giardina from and what he's used to. He has the two three-pointers. And, 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 and give credit to Gennaro and Guzman on that. They've been all over the court defense in Santiago. The guards have been playing well. For Hazel area, from two from inside the arc, 6 of 14, 43%. Not terrible. Four turnovers. It's going to happen. But the big thing that you want to see that sticks out at me, Coach, 17 three-point attempts. Three of them they made. That's 17 percent, 0.6. With my Hazelton math there, well, and your Coach Hazel Barlett is not happy about that. Your Hazelton math is correct. So here's what's going to have to happen. It's very. It really is. It's simple for the second half. Two things are glaring. Hazelton was beaten badly on the offensive glass in the first half. And secondly, if you're shooting 17 percent from three-point land and you're continuing to take that many. You're either going to have to get the ball inside or hope that you start this second half shooting much better than what you're shooting, or you're not going to win the game. So we'll see how the third quarter goes. Absolutely. Here, I was trying to read the scoreboard here. It's getting electrical here, Coach, from the Hazel Career Center. You know what they say. More electric than Thomas Edison's basement. And here comes Gennaro across the timeline. Into the corner to Santiago. Cougars going from left to right this half. Over to Marshall. Marshall taps the brakes. Back over to Luke. Luke weaving. Smallest guy in the court. Gets it to drop. Give him nine, coach. And he's been the floor general out there tonight for Hazleton. Over to Clark. Clark back over to Walter. And down low to Cincetti. Picks up his dribble. Turnaround jumper. Can't get the fall. Rebound by Long. Three ball on the way by Giardina. No good. Here come the Cougars. Santiago backs it back out. Control Long. Three. No good. Marshall gets the rebound. Joey going up. No call at all. Fans not liking that here. Well, a lot of screaming on that one. That was... Cincinnati for three, gets a good look. Marshall with the ball, and Cougars going to walk it up. 6.45 to go, a minute and a half in here. A minute and 15 seconds in, and Cougars with a one-point lead to the third quarter. Coach having a little headwear problems, I see? Nope, just making an adjustment. All right. The, um... Here. Officials are certainly letting them play. Absolutely. Marshall picks up his dribble. Wild pass. Oh, nice. No look pass. Santiago came loose. Yeah, wonderful. And Cougars have opened up a three-point lead to start the third quarter. We say it. First two minutes, Coach. We're at six minutes and 12 seconds. Cougars started. What a 4-0 run. Walter back over to Cincinnati. Cincinnati left wing. Drives, puts it on his hip. Good block by Guzman, and that's going to stay here with Pittston area. And, I, you know, I mean, a lot of people are complaining about the officiating, but you know what? They've been consistent the whole game. They've been calling it the way they have. Or not calling or it. Or not calling it, whatever way you want to look at it. 
Let the kids play. You are correct. It has been consistent. Well, that was from... That was from Lackawanna County, man. He launched that one. Yeah, that was way outside. Cougars by three. 5.56 to go in the third quarter. And the clock moving. Marshall over to Catrone. Catrone, ball held high above his head. Passed out low again. Oh, man, good pass. And where it is. Two times, last two times down the court. Where have the baskets come from? Right underneath the basket off of back cuts. Nice job. Sammy got loose, and now Joey got loose. Three, three baskets in the paint. Cougars on a 6-0 run here to start the third quarter. Let's keep it right here, Coach. Well, you can't ask for a better half. So what did we talk about right before we started the third quarter? I said, you're going to have to make an adjustment. Either your outside shots are going to have to start falling, or you're going to have to get the ball inside. And Hazleton's been able to do that so far, and they've been able to open up a five-point lead, which I believe is their largest of the game. And I'm watching Coach Billing down there talking to Chris Catroni. Just patting him on the head, and that's telling him to keep your head up. Because Chris, is, he, you can see he's disappointed with himself. Shots will fall. Take them from in the paint. Take them in point blank range. Cougars three for three this half. From the floor, 27-22. Cougars by five. Cincinnati over to Giardina on that right wing being guarded by Gennaro. Who's, oh, nice poke again, and it's going to stay here. I thought and that like was I said, a double Luke, doink. Luke got some quick hands there. Been a lot of poke checks and back checks today in this game. No two minutes for Ruffin, though. We can tell you that. We haven't had many of them. Walter picks up his dribble. Back over, Giardina running one-hander. No good, and Control pulls the rebound down. <laughs> nice defense by Hazelton. Hazel needs to be patient again. Get another good shot like you did the last three times down the court. Five minutes, four seconds to go in the third quarter. Pittston area has not scored in the first three minutes. Marshall picks up his dribble, back to Catrone. Catrone, down low, kicks it back out to Gennaro. Gennaro, over to Marshall. Marshall surveying the court, back over to Gennaro. Marshall, thought about the three, long cross-court pass to Santiago. He'll launch a three, can't get it to fall. And into the hands of Ethan Clark. He has a ton of rebounds tonight. He does. Over to Giardina and back to Cincinnati, who runs the point for the Patriots. Comes in average in 16 points a game. And he has 10 tonight. He's been absolutely dynamite. Nice head fake by Long. Can't get it to fall. Giardina with the rebound. Cincinnati right down Broadway. No look pass hey, behind his back. Tried to get a little cute with the behind the back pass. And I don't think Coach liked that too much. A little too cute. Big possession for the Cougars now, you know. The way it's been going for Pittston in this quarter, to be able to open it up to a seven-point lead can be big. Well, Coach, four minutes in, and the uh, Patriots haven't scored. Got to get a good shot here for Hazel area. And there's no shame in working the clock to get yeah. that shot. And you don't need a three-pointer. They haven't been falling tonight. Guzman off the hop over to Catron. Now back down low, Santiago. Kicks it back. Marshall thought about it over to Catron. And it's going to stay here with Hazelton as Long could not do the tightrope along the side there. Yeah, not a very aggressive pass by the Cougars. And Long was able to intercept it. Almost got the turnover. I'll tell you who needs a basket here for Hazel area is Chris Catron. It's a confidence builder. Would agree. He's too good of a player to have two points at this point in the ball game. Pass over to Marshall. Marshall drives. Swatted away by Long. Here comes Cincinnati in transition. Two on two. And he'll go to the line to shoot two. With 3.17 to go. Rare foul. Not many foul shots. No, since I, I think this is only the third one. And Cincinnati has the first two. He made the first two to start the game. And he's four for four for the line. Give him 12 points. Shooting 72% for the season. Pittston's first two and a quarter. We're going to get some pressure from Pittston. Well, I think if they press, it's going to benefit Hazel. 
And then they finally have called the body on Ethan Clark. He was really harassing Luke all the way up the court. 3-10 to go here in the third quarter. A rare whistle. Cougars by three. And Gennaro. Nine points on the ball game. Left-handed dribble now dishes off to Santiago. Nikolai. Surveys the court. Chest high over to Gennaro. Pass into the corner. Guzman, nice head fake baseline. Switches hands and... They're going to call a Whoa. charge. We'll play on. I don't think Coach Barletta was in agreement with that, but as you said, we got to play on here. That'll Three make two point of game. 2.51 to go. Wow. It's insane. Oh. And now they're going to get Sammy running through a screen. A pick, excuse me. So now we've gone forever without a whistle, <laughs> and now within the last 20 seconds, we've got two of them. Three of them, actually. Pinson still, right. I, don't, I don't believe Pinson substituted yet. I think it's still the starting five. Cincinnati to the basket, just too strong. Agreed. That looked, well. That could have been a travel, but he didn't call it. Correct. Pinson, or uh, Hazleton's got to get the ball over. 27-26. Santiago drives, hangs in the air. No call. Rebound control. Gets the put back. Chris needed that one bad. He did. He stood with it, though. Give him credit. Two minutes and ten seconds to go. Cincinnati taps the brakes, and there's a, a rejection by Catron. Gennaro running the court up to Catron. Can't get it to fall, but he'll go to the line. And there's the Chris Catron we know here on there this team. There we go. Yep. Hard nose and doesn't quit. Well, you know, Hazelton got up by five. Pittston came back, so now let's see if let's see if Chris can. Widen the lead a little bit here, quelling this disturbance by Pittston getting back in the game. Messiano coming into the ball game. Chris shooting 71% from the free throw line, missed the first one. Second one is good. 30 to 26, four point lead. We're at the two minute mark, coach, in the third quarter. Anson said he jogs the ball across the timeline. Patriots going from right to left on your screen. Down by four. cincinnati has been absolutely dynamite. Giardina has been pretty quiet. Cincinnati again right on cue up and in. Give him 16. He's been their best player this evening by four. Marshall picks up his dribble. Now back to Gennaro. 134 to go in the third quarter. It's a two-point lead and Luke went back court there. And a turnover for Hazel area. Correct. They had they had potential numbers, but both of Hazelton's wings players going down the court had their back to the ball, so they couldn't see a potential pass. Walter, now back over to Cincinnati. Anthony slowly across the timeline, being guarded by Catrone now. And back out to Gennaro. Pass down low through Santiago's hands. I didn't see Carl. Are they playing? Are Hazel and Man, are they still in the zone? I think they're a matchup now. I, I think, think they're, they're matching up, yeah. but but whatever whatever it is, they're not letting Pittston's guards get started. They're 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 running them out there for the most part. As you can see right there, right out on them. That was Clark now back over to Cincinnati. They put much taller control now. Gennaro on Giardini. He's done a fantastic job tonight. No call there. Walter with the ball in the paint up and he is fouled. Let's see, that's I think it's on Joey Marshall. One minute to play here, and one second in the third quarter. And Matt Walter going to the line, shooting 73%. Looking to tie it up here. First one up, first one is good. And it's a one-point game, Coach. Yep. Hazen was up five. And second one is good. 8-3 run here in the latter part of the third quarter for Pittston area to tie the game up at 30. They better get across the timeline. Catrone 
Back over to Santiago, 50 seconds to go. Mid-range jumper is no good. Marshall, well, he's lucky to get called over to back there. That possession now is going to go to Pittston with just under 45 seconds left to go in the third quarter. Hazel in three points in the last three minutes here from the field. They've gone ice cold. They've gone dry. And 38 seconds to go, Cincinnati. Right to the basket, up and in. Yeah, Hazleton's got to do a better job of contesting him. That was that was too easy. Oh, long cross court pass to Santiago. And Seattle up and in. We're tied at 32. Great ball movement by Hazleton to break the press. Yeah, Marshall spotted him at the end here. 14 seconds to go. Coach said motion. He wants one shot. Nine seconds to go. Cincinnati from the volleyball spike line now. Kicks it in gear. Little shake and bake. Dipsy Doodle up, and he is going to... There should be one second on the clock here. Definitely was a second on the clock when it went out. We're going to see if they reset it to one second. See what happens when Chubby's not here? <laughs> Chubby took a day off, and but they're going to get the... Point four. Point four. So you get a quick tap here. You don't have time for a turn and shoot. Quick tap. <laughs> Pitson's coach there wants a foul there. Nothing called, and we're right we're back where we started, Kurt, Coach. After three quarters, 32-32. Let's take a quick break. We'll be back for the fourth. We're back here before we go to the fourth. A little statistics here for you. We are deadlocked at 32 for Pittston area. They are shooting 11 for 26 from the field, 42%, two of six from behind the arc. Score ten, from Tom ten turnovers at the half. And Tom Canick 32, Crestwood 22. And the area half. from the field. They are 11 for 22, 50%. So that's up. And from behind the arc, three for. 19 and that'll drop down to 15 percent but hey we're deadlocked at 40 to 32 we got eight minutes to settle it here thank you christian doing a great job on stats tonight and uh, the cougars will inbound here coach eight minutes to go winner in sole possession of second place in wyoming valley conference division one and that looks that will be big here for the playoffs coming up shortly you are correct where the top two teams will qualify in each division of the wyoming valley conference and I'll tell you what, in, in, the, in Division Two, coach, Holy Redeemer's in there, and Patriots they got a nice squad this year. I saw them play. Anthony yeah, we see them at Williamsport. Yeah, first. very good team. Dallas is in Division One. Hazel and Pittston vying there. Only one game behind Dallas, so both teams have got to play them again. So, game of... Big magnitude here, and there's going to be another foul. That's going to be on Ethan Clark again, who's been really closely checking Luke the entire night. So we got four fouls apiece. Janeiro gets the inbound, deadlocked at 32. Nice pass to Marshall. Catron flashes open underneath, and I'd like to see Chris go right up with that. Don't put it on the floor. Cincinnati. Up ahead to Walter, and it's off his fingertips. Yeah, he had plans on what to do with the shot before he caught the ball. Here comes that full court press now. Oh boy. Over to Marshall. Marshall tiptoes. Long pass to Catron. They got somebody cutting back. They didn't see him and threw it away again. Yeah, they're, they're, they rushed that. Cincinnati weaving. Back over to Giardina. So we got a little helter skelter here to last 30 seconds or so, Paul, and in the fourth quarter. Silvio has not taken a shot. I think he's taken maybe one shot this half. 
Yeah, they defensed him well. Sincetti's yeah. been pitched in tonight. Yeah. Long three. That's short. And Marshall, easy rebound as he cleans the boards up. Guzman, nice pass down low, but they're going to call it another offensive foul on Guzman. And neither side substituting much here this evening. Like you said, I, I haven't seen anybody come off of Pittston's bench. And now as soon as I say that, here we go. He's throwing into the game for Cougars. Cincinnati. But the ball drives, hangs in the air, and he's going to shoot two. He is. And he's been deadly from the line tonight. I think he's only missed one, if he's missed one. No, he has not missed any. He's been perfect, four for four. If my math serves me correct, I believe. I think he's the only player on Pittston that has shot foul shots. Yep. Maybe, no, Walter, I think, shot way we've shot one. Give him 19 for the evening. He's got, he has 19 of the 33 points. Make it 20. 34-32. 20 for him, 14 for the rest of the Patriots squad. Yep. And six of those came from Giardina's two three-pointers. Yep. Santiago. Full timeout, Hazel area. As we're two minutes in here to the fourth quarter, Hey, change it to a 30, Paul. Late. 30? Okay, we'll stay here then with a 30. Well, the fourth quarter the first time around was Hazleton's demise. So let's see if that changes tonight. But it's been back and forth. Biggest lead of the game was seven, I believe, by Hazleton at the start of this second half. And that, that's what happened against Dallas. And now the first time against Pittston. You said you can't go in, you can't afford to go into those droughts. Here, 6.02 before we send it home or we'll be going to overtime, Coach. Detron inbounds here, 34-32, Pittston leads. Santiago with the ball at the top of the key. Picks up his dribble. Nice shovel pass down to Miziano, and I need him to get steps, and they are. Again, Hazelton hesitant when they're catching that ball instead of being confident and physical and going up with it, and it cost them. Nice hustle by Gennaro. Cincinnati for three. Oh, that's a dagger right yeah, there. Yeah, he's something. He's, he's, he's been unbelievable tonight. 23 points. Pittston by five. 5.34 to go. Hazel has not scored here in the fourth quarter. Hazel's got to be patient. They don't need to shoot three-pointers. Marshall skies for that rebound and he'll go to the line. A hard foul wow. there <laughs> by Giardina. And Joey's going to go to the line. He's going to get two. It could have been a bevy of Patriots who were surrounding him. Twenty-three points tonight for Anthony Sincetti. He's been he's been sensational and he's done it. He's done it every way. He's done it on the foul line. He's done it from long range. He's done it off the dribble. He's done it from medium jump shot. So he's he's the real deal. He's just a good athlete, all around athlete. He said football player, wide receiver for the Patriots. Marshall hits the first and gets the second. And that was needed. Yeah, Cougars needed those Mario coins as I could hear them chicken in the background. 5.15 to go. Two minutes and 45 seconds in between Hazel and scoring. To the basket, he goes, misses the bunny, but Walter is there to put it back in. Once again, Hazelton having issues on the offensive glass. We're under five minutes to go. Santiago picks up his dribble, a little hard to Marshall. And it's got a nice save there by Giardina. Pittson just beating Hazelton to the ball. Up by five with the ball. Three ball on the way is no good. 
Santiago ran it down. Nikolai. Well, there's a foul there by Cincinnati. That was a good foul because that was a, a smart, layup. I was just, you beat me to the punch, Paul, but it was a smart foul. And you can see the senior leadership now by Cincinnati. He's telling his teammates to calm down, slowing down. We're ahead by five, not down by five. Not a good shot there by Giardina. Patron, three, got it. Big one, I believe that's Hazleton's first three point basket from the second quarter. They've been rare tonight. Two point lead for the Cougar, for the Patriots. 4.19 to go, Cincetti picks up his dribble back over to Long. Back to Cincetti, Long, three. Can't get it to fall, ball batted around in the hands of Santiago. Over to Gennaro. 4.06 to go. Gennaro getting caught under the basket, threw it away. And Marshall with a foul there to stop the break. And that is going to be either the sixth or seventh foul. I'm not sure if they updated the scoreboard, but it's going to be the seventh. It's going to be one and one. And the last person you want on the line tonight. He's a 72% free throw shooter normally, but not tonight. And he gets the kind bounce. 24 on the evening for the 5'11 senior. Well over his 16 point average. Full time out. Let's take a break. We'll be back here to Hazel area. 401 to go here Just in the ballgame. Just reminded the Cougars travel to Mountaintop to meet the Crestwood Comets on Tuesday evening. Hope to see you there. Four-point lead for the Pittston area Patriots. And as we come down the home stretch, Pittston's got two timeouts left. Paul Hazelton with three. And over to Guzman. Now back to General. General setting up the offense over to Santiago. Back to Marshall. Control. Down low to Santiago. Gets himself trapped underneath and he stepped on the line. And another, another turnover for correct. Hazel area. At the wrong times. Uh, Jim Pinson area credit though. They are physical and they are banging Hazel around on every aspect. Cincinnati. Right across the timeline. 3.35 to go. Clock moving here in the fourth quarter. Pinson taking their time. Up by four. Hazel has not had an answer for Cincinnati at all. Nope. 25 points on the night. Off the bank, oh, and up and in goes Long. Absolutely no box out, no, nobody at home on the boards. Lead is six, with 3.10 to go. Gennaro picks up his dribble, hand in the passing lane, who else? Cincinnati. Missed the bunny, but follows them. Oh, three for a buck, is that rimmed out? And they're gonna get a foul there. And a big turn of events is Giardina foul. It's gonna be one and one coach, but not one, not two, but three misses underneath. It looked like when you come out for warm-ups and everybody comes under the basket and does their layup. Well, the last one was halfway down and popped out. Clock stopped. Gennaro at the line. Let's keep that play in the back of our heads if Hazelton comes back to win this. That was a six-point lead with 2.58 to go. We're going to mark that down. Luke Berry's the first. Give him double digits for the evening. 
And sometimes plays like that have a way of being the difference in the game. Lead down to four. Hazel needs a defensive stop here. Up ahead to Clark. Clark dribbles across the timeline. They're looking for Cincinnati to hand it off to their captain, and they do. Cincinnati now being guarded by Guzman. Sammy, 2.42 to go. Good hands by Santiago. Couldn't get it back to the ball. They're going to see Pitts. They milk the clock here. 2.31 to go. Clock moving here. Over to Long. Long being guarded by Marshall. Picks up his dribble and a Pittston timeout and a good timeout. Full timeout. 2.24 to go. Let's take our final break of the night. And we'll be back to Hazel area. Cougars down four late. Daddy shark, do 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 do, mommy shark, do 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 do, mommy shark. Daddy shark, do 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 do, daddy shark, do Grandma shark, do 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 do, grandma shark, do 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 do, grandma shark, do 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 do, grandma shark. Grandpa shark, do 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 do, grandpa shark, do 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 do, grandpa shark, do 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 do, grandpa shark. Let's go. All right, we're back here. Everybody doing the shark, coach. Cougars down four. 2.24 to go. Patriots ball. Both teams in the bonus. Possession arrow favors Pittston. Cincinnati. And it's going to stay here. Good hands by, I think that was Marshall got a hand in there. It was either him or Sammy getting another poke check in. It's no mystery here who's going to who's going to try and control the ball for the Patriots ball the last two Walter minutes. Back to Cincinnati. 2.15 to go. And Pitts is going to run as much time off the clock as they can and hope for a bad pass. Back to Cincinnati. Two minutes, six seconds to go. Weaving it around, kicks it back out. Giardino, long three. Oh, baby! Yeah, he's been quiet most of the night, but that's his third one of the evening. and Couldn't come at a better time for Pittston than then. Yeah, Hazel needs to answer and quick. Catron's going to launch a three. No good rebound in the hands of Long. And there's a foul now as a seven-point lead with 1.44 to go. And it looks like at this point it's going to come down to a free throw contest. Yep. And Giardina probably with his biggest basket of the game. Three threes for him for tonight. There's a low scoring fourth quarter again for the Cougars. Talk about history repeating itself. Long shooting 58%, knocks down the first one. Now if you just do the math, You've really got to make every possession count here, and you can't take forever to get your points. Oh, and Long knocks them both down. 142 to go. Yeah, we have a gift from Pittston. 101 in Gennaro, the best foul shooter Hazel has at 88%. Yeah, exactly what you don't want to do there. Coach Demenza did. It. Why? You know, why stop the clock? But that's great for Hazelton. Stop the clock, give him a chance to get back and chip at this lead a little bit. And second one on the way is good. Lead is seven. 12 points for Luke, seven point lead. Good call. Good Hazelton timeout. Call a set, a timeout down by seven. And Coach Marlette has got a few left. Got well, three left. Coach, as you said, it's going to come down to a foul shooting contest. Two left, excuse me. Yeah, now, obviously, if you're pissed, then you want the ball in, you know, you want the ball in your all-world hand tonight. 
everybody knows Sensetti's going to be handling the ball, but the, the problem is now with Giardina just sinking that three-point shot that he just did, you know, they're, they're probably going to be the big two that are going to be controlling the offensive situation here for the rest of the game for Pittston. I mean, I don't think that's any, you know, any big news to anyone. No. Just looking at free throw percentages for the year for the Patriots, and they're all they're all pretty much high 50s, mid 60s. With Walter being the highest, and Sensetti 73 and 72 percent, and Sensetti hasn't missed hardly anything tonight from anywhere at any time. And you can see Sensetti talking coming out of the huddle, telling the younger players. You know, nice pass down low, and Long will go to the line to shoot two. Yeah, they had numbers off the inbounds for some reason, and one thirty-six to go. That'll be the ninth team foul. And Long will shoot a pair. First one up. First one is good. Sam Guzman going to check back in for Hazleton. Did Pinston sub anybody? I, I haven't I, seen I it do tonight, not think Paul. They any. I think the first five have played the whole game. Second one is good. Nine point lead, 136 to go. Comes Gennaro. Over to Guzman, launches a three. That is short. And it's going to be Pittston ball and 128 to go. And Hazleton just has, has had a miserable night. We were tied at 32 going shots. into the fourth quarter. An 18-point quarter so far by Pittston. And Cincinnati dribbling around. And there is a foul there. That should be two shots now as that's the tenth. Junior Coste, I believe. Hey, what nice crowd on hand tonight, coach. And they were loud and into it. I think some of you're starting to see some of them file out right now. Yeah. Yeah. Finally, Cincinnati misses a shot. He's had 26 points tonight, so. 10 point lead. Gennaro hasn't dribbled off his foot. Back to Marshall, back over to Luke. Long NBA range three, that's short. Ball tipped around, Marshall tips it. It's gonna be, shouldn't be pits the ball, and it is. 103 to go and a 10 point lead. It's not enough time, coach. I just don't think there's enough time for possessions. No, no. Back over to Walter, and back over to Giardina, and he is fouled. Well, unless something drastic happens, Pittston is going to move into lone second place in the Wyoming Valley Conference as we head down the stretch here. Yeah. Hazleton's got a... Forget about this one as they will go to Tunkanic tomorrow night, who the last score we got was upsetting Crestwood earlier on. And second one rims out. Lead is 11, final minute to go. Drill drives to the basket, that is short, rebounded by Long. Sensetti gets up to Giardina and That's gonna just about do it, Coach. Yeah, he said it's not enough. It's not enough time. Not enough possessions. Hazleton had their shot. They opened up a seven-point lead uh, and just went dry. Really, after they opened up that lead, they, they just twenty-one points for Pittston so far in the, in the fourth quarter, Coach. Yep. The difference again. It happened the first time they played them, and it's happening again. Correct. Well, it was a much lower score. You know, it was, it was still a 10-point difference in that first game. 
but it was the fourth quarter that lost the game for Hazleton. And Marshall hits a three. The same thing's going to happen tonight, unfortunately. And they're going to get the ball into Cincinnati. 30 seconds to go. We'll see if Hazleton still chooses the foul. And they will, as Giardina will go to the line to shoot two. 29.4 seconds to go, coach. I don't believe uh, I don't believe Mr. Giardina has visited the foul line in a long time. If no, he maybe, went, he, he just went to the line. Before. I mean, other than this quarter. He yeah, no, no, he anything. hasn't. He hasn't shot any defensive quarter. He's two of three. Sneakily getting up to near his average. Yeah, I mean, Hazel really controlled him most of the game. Lead 12, long pass. Santiago weighs it up and in. Leads at 10, 22 seconds. Another foul to Cincinnati. Just well, a little too little, too late. Correct. You know, and, and it was big coach. The first two minutes and 45 seconds, I believe, of this quarter, Hazel did not score again. But it came out, they went down, if I remember correctly, they went down inside on their first two possessions, got two baskets, and then, first and then, the yep, quarter, and yeah. then went dry again, and, yeah. you know, you just can't have it. Gennaro puts it back, can't get the fall. Who else would have rebound? Sinsetti, seven seconds. Patron from the corner for three, no good. Santiago lays it up and in. And there's your horn and there's your final. Well, let's total up those stats. We'll get, uh, we'll review the game. We'll pick our player to game. And uh, we'll call it a night here, coach. Very disappointing for the Hazel fans, but sometimes you have games like that. And you have quarters like that, but Hazel will press on. And Cougars, when's their next game, Coach? They got tomorrow night, right? Against tomorrow Tunkanic. night, they're at Tunkanic at Crestwood. And we'll be back here for the boys on the third against the Wolfpack from Wilkes-Barre. Then they go up to Valley West, and then they close the season here. Uh, against the Dallas Mountaineers. All right, for Pittston area, 58 points. They shot 13 of 31 from the field. That's 42% from three-point land. They shot 4 of 10, 40%. They had 10 turnovers, Coach. At I believe at the half, they had none in the fourth quarter. Yep. Key to the game right there. For Hazel area, they shot 14 for 31 from the field. Not a bad shooting night from the in between the arc but five for 26 from the three-point line. That gives you 19 for 57 from the field for Hazleton combined. Six turnovers in the fourth quarter for the Cougars that did them in. Personally, I feel on that, but stats don't lie. No. But the good thing about sports is you can forget about it tomorrow because you got another game tomorrow coming up as we are at the three-quarters poll here in the season, and everyone's jockeying for position in the district and the Wyoming Valley Conference playoffs. This is a costly loss for Hazleton in the Wyoming Valley Conference, but in the district, the District 2 and District 4, Hazleton still sitting the second seed, Williamsport, the number one seed, who I will see the Millionaires on Thursday night against Shemokin, who have a really, really nice team. They played a really good game last year against Hazleton. But, Coach, I don't think it's any secret here. Our player of the game is Anthony Sinsetti. 28 points as he put 28 out of 58 points for the Pittston Patriots, and he put this team on his back when uh, Silvio Giardino was not shooting well in the first half. He did end up with 14 or 15 points. Yeah, he points. sneakily he got, got, got his points at the end. But it was, listen, it the, the beginning, the middle, and the end, it was all Anthony Sensetti, five uh, eleven senior, putting on a a clinic tonight. Really, he did it from everywhere: foul line, three point line, off the dribble drive, short jump shots. I know I said the exact same thing earlier, but 
good ball player. Yeah, and for Hazleton, not a good night shooting, as we said. You know, Luke Gennaro had his, his moments. He played well, played really stellar defense. Gennaro, Santiago, and Guzman played really tough defense on the Pittston guards. And there's Coach Gavio walking down there, Coach. Just not enough there. consistency. To the back, and uh, yeah, but um, tomorrow night they play Tuck County. They got to win that game, and you know, we'll be back here on Monday night for the girls play taking on Crestwood. Yeah, and unfortunately, they lost the heartbreaker. Yeah, they lost to the Pittston girls. They came back, and in case anybody didn't hear, Pittston area hit a three pointer or a three point play. I'm not sure if there was a foul, or I think she hit a three pointer. It was Booth, the senior, the thousand point score. Hit a three-pointer, put Pittston up 47-45. Hazel Naria came back, It was and they had a three shot at the buzzer. One second, a three-pointer fell short or off the rim. Not sure exactly what happened. A 49-47 win for the Lady Cougars, or for the Lady Patriots over the Lady Cougars again. You know, a heartbreaker. And this team just loses. You know, they lost so many close games, both teams. But... They'll, they'll, they'll be okay. You know, we're going to keep pushing forward, Coach. That's all we can say. Well, really, you know, and this is, this is again, this is athletics. You always have a choice on how you want to handle it. I'm sure that, that uh, you know, Coach will coach them up to look at their mistakes. But the, the, the problem here, not problem, but the situation here is you don't have much time because it's a quick turnaround. You're going right out to play Tunkhannock in a away game tomorrow night. So I'm sure the boys will bounce back and, once again, not an effort issue. They just they just no. quit putting the they just could not put the biscuit in the basket tonight enough times. And I think for for this season, what seems to be a theme for both teams, the Hazel Area boys, Hazel Area girls, is long droughts without scoring. Yep. You know what I mean? There's been and there, like I said, you saw Pittston down there with two fifty eight to go, a six point lead, and I circled it here and I wrote it down. They missed three bunnies there, Coach. They all popped back out of the rim, but that wasn't the turning point in the game. We thought it might, you know, could have been as Hazel came down and scored and cut the lead back down to four. But, like I said, quick turnaround. Hazelton played very well against Tunkhannock, so I like their chances tomorrow, but it is a road game. And as you said, Monday, it's never good to play in hostile territory up in Crestwood. That is Tuesday, I believe, right? Monday or Tuesday? I think it's Tuesday. Yeah, 31st. we're here to 30th. Right. Um, they're up in Crestwood, back here against Wilkes-Barre on the seventh. They go at Valley West, never an easy place to play. And then they finish out the season senior night um, against Dallas, which will be another big game. Um, you know, here they play Dallas really good for three quarters. And Wilkes-Barre, don't let their record fool you. I say it all the time when they play. You never know what you're getting from that team. That is a Jekyll and Hyde team. They can come out and beat you by 40, or you can beat them by 40. There's Correct. no in-between with <laughs> You know, and it's always been that way. So let's uh, thank everybody. Damien, our producer, Bobby Mahalik, for doing a great job. The Hazleton area for welcoming us in here. The YouTube channel. Thanks for everybody for listening. Christian Smith, our stack guy, he is our uh, did a great job tonight giving us his percentages, showing us his Hazleton math there. Done a great job for us there. My partner, Coach, always a pleasure calling the game with you. It's a final score, 58 to 48. The Pittston area Patriots defeat the Hazleton area Cougars. We'll see you all Monday night here back at Hazleton area. Drive home safely. Good night, everybody.